Hello, my name is Joshua Carpenter. Um, I'm a PhD student at Purdue University, and the project I'll be presenting here is some initial work focused on using space-borne LIDAR for large area phenotyping. Because of its ability to penetrate the canopy, LIDAR technology is often used for determining the height of vegetation. Uh, for example, in agricultural research, LIDAR systems mounted on UAVs are being used to determine crop height. But these UAV flights are limited, often to just the size of a field. Uh, in forestry and ecological studies, they've long used space-borne LIDAR for measuring the canopy height of woodlands and jungles on national or even continental scales. So the goal of this project uh, is to determine the feasibility of using data from two different space-borne systems JEDI and ISAT-2, which are usually used for environmental studies. I'm going to see how well they can model the canopy height of crops. Now, the value of this research is that if the feasibility is shown, these data sets could be used to calculate crop biomass on a continental scale and be implemented into global crop yield prediction algorithms. Very little research has been done on applying space-borne LIDAR to agricultural applications, so this is also a gap in our knowledge which we hope to fill. A simple methodology will pre be presented here. First, the elevation data from JEDI or ISAT-2 will be collected and visualized over a specific agricultural area. Then, the, over the same agricultural area, we will have an independent data set not collected from satellite, but collected from some airborne vehicle. That might be a UAV, or that might be a fixed wing manned aircraft. But an independent data set at a much higher resolution will also be visualized over the same area. And then the two data sets will be compared. The assumption here is that the low resolution, or I'm sorry, the high resolution data set from the airborne vehicle will show the top of the canopy and the ground elevation. We can compare those indicators to the space-borne data set and see if the space-borne data set will give us indicators of both the top of the canopy and the ground elevation. So let's look at the first sensor. JEDI is mounted to the International Space Station and it uses full waveform LIDAR technology. And you can see in the picture on the right, the area of the space station where the JEDI sensor is located. The space station flies about 400 kilometers above the surface. This gives each beam a 25 meter diameter footprint on the ground and in a long track return spacing of about 60 meters. JEDI's eight beams cover a swath 4.2 kilometers wide. So clearly the sensor is designed for large area coverage. Now I mentioned that JEDI is a full waveform um, technology. When analyzing this waveform over a field, is it over a, an agricultural field, is it, it is expected that uh, we'll see two peaks in the data set. The first peak will represent the canopy height, while the second will represent the ground. The difference between these is, that, is the crop height. So to demonstrate this, um, we'll look at the images in this slide. Now, this is just a sample image of what a waveform might look like over um, a forested area. And as you can see, you have the forested area with the 25 meter diameter return. And then we have the resulting waveform. And as you can see, most of the light is reflected. Most of that energy is reflected by the top of the canopy and you get the large peak uh, near the top of the canopy. And then lower down, you get the rest of the light being reflected by the ground. And the difference between these gives you an indication of the height. So in a field, we're looking to see something similar to this. A spike where there's a lot of reflection, reflected energy from the top of the canopy, and then a spike where the rest of the energy is reflected by the ground. As a proof of concept, JEDI data over Martell Forest, which is a research forest near Purdue University, uh, was sampled. 
The figure on the left shows the 25 meter footprint of two Jedi returns over the forest. The figure on the right shows the Jedi waveform that, that will be the red line um, for footprint number one. So here, if we come over, we can see that for footprint number one, we have this red return. And this is the amplitude of the energy being received in that, in that footprint. And if we just look at the red line, we can see we have a large spike for the top of canopy, and then it reduces, and then you have a little spike here at the, at the ground. The blue line is what I'm gonna call a pseudo return. We have an independent data set. Um, it's Indiana State DSM, which is derived from uh, aerial LIDAR. And from that DSM, we looked at all of the elevation pixels that fell within this footprint. And from all of those pixels, we created a false return, this blue line. It's, you can think of it as like a histogram, the like number of pixels falling into each elevation bin. And if we use this as validation, we can see that our, our pseudo return shows a return for the top of the canopy, and it also shows a return for the ground. And <clears throat> let me move to the next slide. So this is the same proof of concept, but for a second footprint. The pseudo return is again created from a DSM, and when compared to this, and when compared to Jedi, we see that the Jedi also shows the ground and the top of canopy. So there is there is a slight difference you can see between the the top of canopy and the pseudo return in Jedi, and this is accounted for because of the time of year that the data was collected. The pseudo return data was collected earlier in the year in the summertime when the leaves were out and full and the jedi passed over um, martel forest later in the year after many of the leaves had fallen so this is a proof of concept and it shows this bimodal pattern so the question remains will we see a similar pattern over crop fields all right so let's start um, looking at some data in an agricultural setting. So the first data set that we will use for this experiment is a DSM collected from a UAV over a field in Driscoll, Texas, prior to planting. The picture on the right shows the bare soil um, when before the planting happened. So this will give us a uh, indication of where the ground elevation is. The second data set that we're using is the JEDI. And the JEDI passed over um, on May 14th, 2019. And the picture on the right shows the field on that day. And you can see that the field is now growing two different crops. To the north, we have cotton, which is quite small. And you can see a lot of open ground. And to the south, we have sorghum, which is tall and looks fairly dense. So this is on May 14th after the crop had been growing for a couple months. And finally, as we uh, mentioned earlier, the first UAV data set only shows the ground elevation. So we need a data set which shows where the top of the canopy would be located. And this data set, uh, we have another DSM that was collected on June 14th, a month after the Jedi passed over. And this DSM will be used to indicate the top of the canopy. Let's look at some charts. Okay, so let's explain the graph. First thing we have the red line. Well, first I'll indicate that we're looking at the return up at the top of the image on the right here, number 58. This is a return which is on a road near the field. So it's a hard surface where no crops are growing. And now the figure on the left shows the Jedi return in red. You can see the, the return peak. And we also have two pseudo returns. And they're right on top of each other, so it's hard to see the, the difference in color. But there's a brown and a blue. The brown represents the ground 
that DSM that was collected before planting. And the blue represents the DSM collected after growth in June. Now, they're right on top of each other because the return that we're looking at is on top of a hard surface that isn't going to change. Nothing's growing there. What I want to draw your attention to is the shift between the peak in the Jedi and the peak in our pseudo return. This is concerning. We weren't sure why this was happening, and so we're going to look at a few things related to that. Now that shift seems to be something uh, which we found in multiple locations with multiple data sets. And, and here's another example of this 50 centimeter shift. We had a Jedi return over the runway at Purdue Airport. So we took that return, plotted it in red, and then we made a pseudo return from Indiana State LIDAR. And we see a similar 50 centimeter um, shift in elevation. Currently, I don't have an explanation for this shift, but for the purposes of our of our study, we're going to assume that that vertical shift should not be there. We'll do further research to try to figure out why it's there. And we will manually correct for this shift going forward. OK, so if we apply that vertical shift, we can see that now our, our Jedi return matches the return uh, before planting and the pseudo return uh, after the crop had grown. All right, so that's the validation. Now let's look at some returns within the crop. All right, so now we're in the middle of the cotton. And the first thing I'll notice is we were expecting a bimodal distribution of this Jedi return, and it's clearly not. You just see a Gaussian return. So I cannot, from the Jedi alone, I cannot indicate both top of canopy and the ground. However, we should note that we can see, when we compare it to our DSM, our UAV data, this other data set, we can see that the crop is about eight centimeters, the cotton, because our Jedi return is a little higher than the ground return. So again, uh, we're moving on to a return that's split between the cotton and sorghum. And again, the Jedi uh, does not show the bimodal distribution. However, uh, the return does appear to have to have some asymmetrical qualities. So you can, if you look at it, it seems to be shifted a bit, and the tail ends are are not very smooth. So some future work will look into if those features of the distribution of the Jedi can be used to determine the elevation of both the canopy and the ground. But from simple from this simple approach, we cannot see the difference. And we will see that if we compare the Jedi peak to the ground from our UAV, we have a 22 centimeter difference. And if we look at the return from June 14th, you can see two clear spikes. Uh, and this would be because our return is over both the cotton and the sorghum. And finally, we have a return over the sorghum. And we have 70 centimeters um, and shown on the Jedi. So this shows that the Jedi is giving us a return at the top of the canopy. We again can't determine the ground elevation independently. So what's the conclusion? Well, with Jedi data, for vegetation as short as cotton or as dense as sorghum, the Jedi waveform doesn't seem to pick up both the top of canopy and the ground. We do get a good return on the top of canopy, but the, we cannot distinguish the ground. The Jedi waveform does have an asymmetrical distribution over vegetation, and so future research will attempt to infer information about crop height from the variation in that distribution. Let's move on to the next sensor, and this is ICESat Atlas, and is different from Jedi. It produces um, laser pulses at about 10 kilohertz and calculates an elevation based on the time of flight for every received photon. It does not produce a waveform, but rather it produces a, a dense string of discrete points. 
let's look at some of the statistics about it. There are six tracks, and it covers a strip about six kilometers wide. By the time the beam reaches the ground, it has a diameter of 14 meters. But the speed of the laser pulse creates a return about every 70 centimeters along the track. And the vertical resolution is much tighter than JEDI. It's of three to five centimeters. So the point of this slide, again, is to show that this, this uh, sensor is designed for global coverage. So what do we expect? Um, we expect that over a field, there will be many returns uh, recording the top of canopy, and a few returns will penetrate uh, the canopy and retrieve the ground elevation. The difference between these two clusters of returns should produce an estimate of canopy height for that area. So let's look at the experiment for ISAT2. We did not have a pass over the Driscoll field, so instead we found a portion of an ISAT track which passed over a parking lot and a field in Rensselaer, Indiana. We did not have UAV data over this area, but we do have Indiana State LiDAR. So what we'll do is we'll pr produce a profile of the ground elevation from the ISAT2 track, and then create a profile from the LiDAR and compare the two profiles. And here's the result. So let's first look at the area over the parking lot. So you can see the image down here, we have the parking lot, and we'll look at the, the graph. Now the red line represents the LiDAR ground profile. And we can see that the blue dots, which are the ISAT returns, the blue dots match that red profile very well in, in the parking lot. Now, the reason we did this over a parking lot is to say, now we know that both, of our, both our LIDAR and our ISAT data are in the same vertical datum. As ISAT passes over the trees down here, see the trees? As they pass over, you can see the returns go up. That's because we're hitting the canopy. And then as the ISAT passes over the cornfield here, we have um, about a m about two meter difference between the top of the ISAT returns and the red LIDAR profile. Now this shows that the canopy is being detected, but what's even better is that some of these returns from the ISAT to also made it to the ground. You can see a few returns around there. So from ISAT2, we see both the top of canopy and the ground. So what's the conclusion? ISAT2 returns indicate both the top of canopy and the ground within the small area. Now these returns can be used to determine crop height. So this is good news. What's the conclusion of the full of the full project? Well, first of all, Jedi waveform uh, does not give us a direct indicator of the height of shorter vegetation such, such as crops. It works for trees, but it didn't work so well um, for crops. ISAT2 can be used to determine the height of crops independent of other data sets. Where's this where's this research going in the future? Well, first we want to see if we can detect, if we can use the JEDI distribution to infer something else about the crop height. Is there another less direct method to use the JEDI data? Also, even though we saw crop height from ISAT2, we need to validate those heights. And finally, using ISAT2 data to calculate the crop height over large areas automatically is what we eventually want to implement.